And it wasn't just the literature of the early Kamakura period infused with this reborn interest in Buddhist aesthetics which flowered. There was a renaissance in the fields of architecture and sculpture too. At Japan's National Museum in Tokyo, crowds still flock to see the work of a Kamakura period sculptor, still as popular as ever after eight centuries. After the Genpei War, the city of Nava, the old imperial capital, was a smouldering heap. The grand old temples of Kofukuji, Todaji and others had been reduced to ashes by the wrath of the Heike. But the new shogun, Yoritomo, a strict Buddhist and a devotee of the old temples of Nara, was determined to rebuild the city. So he put the carpenters, builders and sculptors of Nara to work. And luckily for Yoritomo, for Nara and for posterity, a fine school of Buddhist sculptors, the K school, was at work in Nara in the late 12th and early 13th centuries. And its finest exponent of Buddhist sculpture Unke was also the greatest sculptor in Japanese history. Several Kamakura temples house statues carved by Unke. Sugimoto Dera, Kamakura's oldest temple, and Enmeiji in the southeast of the city are home to statues of Jizo, the Buddhist guardian of wayfarers and children and at Ennoji Temple, a fearsome god, never before carved by a Japanese sculptor. When Unke, the greatest sculptor of the Kamakura period, was an old man, he lay on his deathbed with his kinfolk around him, and he slowly closed his eyes and sat up with a jolt. Oh, we thought you were dead, said his kinfolk. I was, said Unke. I went down to the underworld. I met Emma, king of the underworld, judge of men's souls. And he said to me, who are you? And I said, I'm Unke. He said, Unke the sculptor? And I said, yeah. And he said, why have you never done a sculpture of me? And I said, I didn't know what you look like. And he said, you know what I look like now? Now get back and do one. And so the newly invigorated Unke made the sculpture believed to be the first of Emma and lived to an even older age. 